Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad that you joined us today for Jesus the Healer. Welcome. And I tell you what, we're going to just dive right into teaching on some of the healing miracles that happened under Jesus' earthly ministry. And while we teach this, release your faith. Yes. Lay hold of the miracle that belongs to you. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Uh, what we have been doing is going through and looking at these healings because uh, if we'll become skillful and study these and become skillful, then we'll know how to receive healing and how to minister healing to someone else. So turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles. Let's go to John chapter 4. And we're going to start reading in verse 46. And I'm going to read through the entire passage and then we'll go back and we will look at each verse individually and study it more thoroughly. So John chapter 4 and verse 46, it says, So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine. Now you remember that was his first miracle. Yes. So he's back in that same city again. <clears throat> And he says, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son for his son was at the point of death. Verse 48, then said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said to him, thy son liveth and himself believed and his whole house. <clears throat> this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Now, Let's back up. Let's go back to verses 46 and 47. Let's read them again and we'll look at them more closely. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. So again, this says that this is Jesus' second miracle that he did in Galilee. The first miracle was when he was at the wedding. Remember, he turned the water <clears throat> into wine. The nobleman has come. His son is at Capernaum. So his son is at a different location where Jesus is. The nobleman travels, comes to where Jesus is. I tell you, it shows he, he believes that something will happen, yes. <clears throat> right? He inconvenienced himself. He didn't just stay at home and say, well, if God wants my son healed, he'll heal him. No, he went to where Jesus was. He put himself in the place where he could lay hold what he needed to lay hold of. <clears throat> So um, he went to where Jesus was. He must have heard about the first miracle. He must have heard about what happened at that wedding. Who knows? Maybe he was at the wedding. We don't know. <clears throat> but we know that he heard about it. 
And uh, because of that, he expected something for his own life. Listen, when you hear what God's done for somebody else, expect God's going to do something for you. Amen. 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 Expect God will do something for you too. Don't just leave what God did for someone else with someone else. Take it personal and say, if God will do that for them, God will do that and more for me. Amen. Amen. Notice his son's at a life and death situation. He's at the point of death. We can assume that the son, it doesn't give the age, but we can assume he's a younger boy because he's still under the authority of his father. Now, when our children are younger, our faith as parents will work for them. As they get older, they're going to have to have their own faith. So that's why you need to, as parents, to train your children to believe God now with you. Let them believe with you as you are training them and showing them what God will do for them by faith. So don't wait until a critical situation before you start training your children. When you're believing God for this and that, for the household, say, babies, let's believe together. <clears throat> Teach them. Train them. Because one day, you're going to, they're going to have to have their own faith. Amen. And, uh, and this is what we recognize, that the, young, the boy must have been young enough, he was still under his father's authority. Now, verse 48 says, Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Well, who's Jesus talking to? Well, he said it unto him. But notice this. He's not talking to the man just that. He's talking to the crowd too. (laughs) He's talking to everybody present. Then verse 49 says this. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down ere or before my child dies. So what's he got faith for? He's got faith that Jesus is going to uh, minister to his son before he dies. Verse 50, Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Now, did Jesus do what the man asked? No, he didn't do what he asked. The man asked him to come to his house, get down there now before he dies. But Jesus said, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Now, remember when Jairus came to Jesus, he said, my little daughter, like at the point of death, come and heal her. Um, And Jesus went with him. But this one Jesus didn't go with. Instead, Jesus said, go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word. The man believed the word. The man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and he went his way. Why didn't Jesus went with Jairus when Jairus asked him? But when the nobleman asks him, he doesn't go with him. Why? Because Jesus knew the man had faith for help before his son died. Listen, going with Jairus, the daughter died before they got there. So she was raised from the dead. But this man's faith is before my child dies. So Jesus knows if I'm going to minister to him before he dies... I can't get there in time, but my word can. Amen. 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 Very good. So he sent the word because he knew the boy would die before he was able to get there. And that's what the man's faith was set on before he dies. So to meet his request of of ministering to him before his son died, he had to send his word. I don't care how far away someone is who has a need, the word can reach them. Amen. Amen. You can send the word. (laughs) Faith knows no boundaries. It travels in a moment. (laughs) The power of God travels in a moment. The power that activates the, 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 the faith that activates the power travels in a moment. The power that meets the faith travels in a moment. <clears throat> Amen. So what did he do? He, it said that he spoke, go thy way, thy son liveth. Now, uh, Jesus put a demand really on this nobleman, didn't he? Because the nobleman had it in mind, I'm going to bring Jesus to my house with me. He's going to travel to my house. Jesus said, I'm going to give you something different than what you asked for, but it's going to get the same result. And that is, I'm going to send my word. And he gave him his word. 
too many times if we're not careful, we're telling Jesus how to do it. Yes. <laughs> we're telling God how to meet our need, how to do this. Well, uh, you may have one way, but if he, if he uses another way, because this is what we have. The nobleman asked for one way and Jesus gave him another avenue, but yet the result was same. It's the result that's important. Right. It's not how we use, it's not what avenue he used, whether he used the avenue we expected or whether he used a different avenue. Don't get hung up on the avenue. What we want is the result. Amen. So Jesus put a greater demand on this nobleman's faith. Believe that his son was healed simply because Jesus said so. That's the only evidence that he had for his son's healing. Jesus said so. He couldn't see his son. He wasn't in the same proximity, in the same location. He couldn't tell that anything changed outwardly. He had no time for a report from a, a messenger to tell him the result. He just had to believe what Jesus said. Yes, amen. And the nobleman chose to believe what he said. He took Jesus at his word. Believing is simply a choice. Yes. 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 It's not a feeling. Right. It's a choice. Right. I choose to believe what he says. Yes. I choose to believe what his word says. I choose to believe what God said to me in my heart. I choose to yes. believe it. Amen. 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 So the nobleman, no, notice this, he believed the words and then it says, and he went his way. He left. Right? Yes. So God has more than one method. Yes. Do not get your faith on the method. Yes. Right. That's good. That's good. This is where many people miss it. Yeah. They get their faith attached to a method. You attach your faith to God, Amen. not to a method. Amen. That way, God can use any method that would be the best for your situation, the best for your faith, the best for you. Yes. Sometimes, now... <clears throat> Uh, sometimes um, we choose a method or we think God's going to use a method that's easiest on our faith. <laughs> but God's going to do what's best for your faith, yes, not right. what's yeah. easiest yes. for your faith, uh -huh. but what's best yeah, for your best. faith. He's going to put a demand yeah. on your faith. Yeah, right. Why? That's how your faith grows. That's yeah. how your faith increases in strength. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, it would have been one thing for Jesus to make the journey back home with the nobleman all the way because then he's got someone to see. Mm -hmm. He's got someone he can listen to. Mm -hmm. He's got someone he can talk to. Right. He's got Jesus' presence with him. Yes. Yes. That would have been a measure, a, a method, but it's easier right. on his faith. Yeah. Right. But Jesus took away that. Yes. Right. Not going to Not going to walk with you. Mm -hmm. Not going to journey with you all the way back home. Yeah. I send my word in front of me. Amen. Yes. I send my word to go before yes. you. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So it puts a whole nother demand yes. on this nobleman's faith, doesn't it? Yes. So he believed Jesus' word and the word said he went his way. So Jesus told him, go thy way, thy son liveth. I like, I like this. Go thy way. Yes. Resume yes. living. Right. Resume yes. living. Yes. <clears throat> you know that this, this, this boy is at the point of death. Um, we don't know how long he had been that way, mm -hmm. but we know this, it has an effect on the family. Right. Yes. When you see a loved one going down to death's door, you see them going that direction. Mm -hmm. It starts getting the attention of everybody yeah. that that per yes. that's loved by, that, right. that loves that person. Right. Everyone's attention starts going there. Right. And I love what Jesus said, go thy way. Thy son liveth. In other words, yeah. resume living. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to make this the focus of your attention anymore. The sickness, this circumstance, this test, this opposition does not have to be the center of your attention. I gave you something else to put your attention on. I sent my word. I sent my word. Amen. Faith doesn't just sit and watch to see if the word works. Faith resumes living. When you send the word, you speak the word, you hold to the word. You don't just sit and say, did it work? Did it work? Did it work? No. I, you just resume living yes. because you believe the word. That's right. Amen. Yes. Act like the word is true. Yes. Yes. That's right. Verse 51 says, And as the nobleman was going down, his servants met him. 
and told him, saying, your son lives. What's that mean? He's recovered. Right. That's right. Amen. Verse 15, 52, rather. Then inquired the nobleman of them the hour when the sun began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Notice he, it says here what hour he began to amend. So notice this is a case of gradual healing. Yes. Yes. It wasn't instantaneous. The fever left him and then he, re, he recovered. Although it's gradual, it's still supernatural. Right. That's right. I said, although it's gradual, it is still supernatural. Many limit God because they get stuck on the instantaneous yes. instead of on the supernatural. Yes. All healing is, divine healing is supernatural. Yes. Miracles are supernatural. Yes. We attach our faith to a supernatural God yes. to do supernatural yes. things, Amen. but they're not always instantaneous. Right. Right. They may be or they may not be. Don't get your faith attached to the wrong thing. Right. That's yes. right. Don't yes. get your faith attached to a method. Right. Don't get your faith attached to a time frame. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll believe it. You know, I, I've seen people, uh, and, and especially I saw this a lot with my husband in his ministry when he'd been ministered to the sick in the healing lines. Uh, somebody would come up in the healing line. He'd lay hands on them. They'd go, they'd start checking their body. Nope, 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 nope. That hadn't left yet. Come back here and pray for this. This still hurts, you know. Yeah. What are they doing? They're, they're, they've attached their faith to the instantaneous. Yes. Yes. And if it's not instantaneous, they think they don't have it. Right. You don't attach your faith to the time frame. You attach your faith to the God Amen. who right. does the work, yes. who, Amen. Per, who, who performs the miracle. Right. Amen. Amen. And so many people miss the supernatural because they're stuck on the instantaneous. Listen, I like instantaneous. You like instantaneous. But what are you going to do if it's not instantaneous? You're going to let your faith drop? You're going to let your faith go? No. Don't get your faith attached to the wrong thing. Don't limit God by thinking, well, if it's not instantaneous, it's not working. The moment you release your faith in the Word of God, Power always starts flowing. Amen. Always, right. always, right. always. Right. Whether it's instantaneous or not is yeah. not the issue. That's right. Right. That's right. Amen. 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 Power always begins flowing. Right. The moment you release your faith, Amen. know that. Amen. 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 Now, when people attach their faith to just instantaneous, if it doesn't happen instantaneously, they don't believe it happened. They don't believe God's doing anything. They don't believe that the word worked if it's not instantaneous or that power is flowing. Right. That kind of wrong thinking the devil will use to rob you of a miracle. Yes, right. yeah. that's true. Yeah. Because this young man began to amend. Yes, did. Yeah. It didn't happen instantaneously, but he did not count it as not being supernatural just because it wasn't instantaneous. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. Mark Amen. chapter 16 and verse 18, lay hands on the sick. Look at this. And they shall, what's the word? Recover. Recover. That recovery process can be longer or it can be shorter. But the word says they'll recover. Once you lay hands on somebody that's sick, once you minister to somebody that's sick, you are authorized to tell them you're recovering. You're recovering. Now, if they only think that recovery means instantaneous then they will think wrong and open the, door, open the door to the devil to steal their miracle from them. So you teach people, don't get hooked, with the, don't get hooked up on the calendar. Yeah. Don't get hooked up on the clock. Right. Keep your faith on the Word. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Faith is not a clock watcher. That's right. Yeah. Good. That's right. 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 I believe what I believe regardless of how much time passes or doesn't pass. Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. Don't let the clock govern your faith. Your faith can only be governed by what God says. So Mark 16, 18 says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It does not tell us how long it will take. It's not our business. Our business is to lay hands on the sick and tell them they are to believe that they recover. And we are to walk away knowing they're recovering right now. 
right now. That recovery process has begun. The moment I laid hands on them and released my faith, the recovery process began, period. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was one evangelist that told uh, of his healing. This was back during the, I believe, the 40s when tuberculosis was such a huge threat here in this nation. And he was a young man and he was in ministry. I believe he was in his early 30s. He had gotten married. He had a young child. And in the course of his travels, he, he got tuberculosis. And so the doctors had diagnosed him and he told the different congregations that he would minister in. He would say, you know, I've been diagnosed with tuberculosis. I'm going to ask you, would you pray for me? Every time you think of me, would you pray for me? And of course, the congregations all said, yes, we'll pray for you. And uh, so he, uh, everywhere he went, he would ask every congregation to do the same thing. And they all agreed. He finally uh, physically declines to such a point that now he's bedfast. And because his, his family is young, he goes to his in-law's, parent, his in-laws home and his wife and his baby and him are staying with the in-laws and uh, he's bedridden there in their home. They were out one day, they were doing work, they were all away from the house and he was at home by himself. And he got to thinking and he said, God, he says, I have prayed and prayed and prayed for hours a day for my healing. And he said, then scores of congregations have agreed to pray for me. So I know that different ones of them are remembering to pray for me. I'm praying for me and I'm getting worse. So evidently it's not prayer I'm lacking because there's so much prayer going up. I'm miss, and I'm still going in the declining direction. So evidently I'm missing it somewhere. And he's, and he no doubt was prompted by the spirit. And he says, I, I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to thank God that I am healed and quit praying to be healed. That's right. yeah. Amen. And so he started doing that. And as he looked out his bedroom window, he could see a grove of trees off to, away from the house and he was bed fast and did not have the strength to go out there but he loved to be outdoors and he was tired of course you can imagine of being in that room and so he thought to himself I'm going to go out there to that grove of trees and I'm going to praise God for my healing I'm going to quit just praying yes, <clears throat> and uh, of course uh, he had difficulty physically having the strength to do that And he made his way. And as he was going, you know, making his way out to that grove of trees, of course, the devil said, you're going to go out there and you're going to fall dead and die. (laughs) And the buzzards are going to lead you to lead your family to you. And he said, so what? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, and so he went out there and he was laying, finally fell down exhausted. He had crawled part of the way to that grove of trees and he lay exhausted on his back. And he's just laying there and begins to praise God. Jesus, thank you for healing. Thank you that you took the price. You paid the price. You took my sickness. You took my disease. And I praise you that I am healed. What's he doing? He's doing what the nobleman did. He believed the word and went his way. Right. He believed what was spoken. Amen. So he lays there and he's doing that. He's just praising God. And the longer he praises God, he recognizes I'm gaining more strength. His voice is getting louder. It's not just a whisper anymore. He's getting louder. He's getting to a normal tone. He said of his own testimony, he said, after two hours, I'm standing up on my feet with my hands out, shouting so loud that they heard me a mile away. What was that? He quit praying and went to believe it. It's right to pray. But there's times you have to believe the word that is spoken and quit asking for what the word has already authorized you to call yours. Amen. 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 This is what the nobleman did is he believed what was spoken and he went his way. It wasn't a lack of power. It was a lack of him acting on the word that was spoken. 
That's right. And that's what the nobleman yes. did. He believed that his son was healed and he left Jesus alone. He didn't just follow him around and hound him. No, you come to my house. No, you come to my house. No, he believed what he said and went his way. That's what real faith is. It believes what's said. And if I could say it this way, is that this miracle really speaks to our time. We don't have Jesus physically walking into our homes and laying hands on people. Now, don't misunderstand me. On a rare occasion, someone may have a vision. Someone may have a visitation like that, but that's the exception. That is not the rule. And there's no scripture that promises you that kind of 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 a experience. But we do have what Psalms 107 and verse 20 says. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen. Amen. You do have that, that he sends the healing word. So this nobleman's son, this healing, it really speaks to our time because we have the privilege of believing that his word that he has sent is the healer today. He sent his word and healed them. People will say, well, if Jesus would just come to my house, you know, I know I'd be healed. Do you know what? There were thousands who walked alongside right. Jesus when his earth, during his earthly ministry that yes. never received their healing. Right. That's true. The crowds and multitudes. Now think of it, the woman with the issue right. of blood. It says that there was a multitude yeah. that was pressing on him, yet she's the only one recorded as yeah. being healed. Right. And all those people saw him. Yeah. Right. All those people had were in proximity to him right. and still didn't receive. It's not seeing something that causes you to believe. It's believing what he yeah. says. Yes. It's yes. the word yes. believed. Yes that brings about your miracle, that brings about your healing. Amen. So we are authorized that his word is enough for us. And that's what, that's how real faith functions. The word is enough for me. Amen. Well, we've been teaching out of my book called The Healer Divine. We want you to get your copy. It's simply a study of all the healing miracles that happened under Jesus' earthly ministry. It'll feed your faith and strengthen your your faith. Amen. Go to DufresneMinistries.org and you can order your copy today. And until next time, remember, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Please join us for our annual Holy Ghost meetings in Marietta, California, January 6th through the 11th, 2023 with Nancy Dufresne. We are also excited to welcome Kenneth Copeland and Richard Roberts as our special guests. For more information, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.